Welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. We are doing some perfectly penguin portraits today. So let me tell you what you're going to need for our project today. You are going to need a pretty thick piece of white paper. You're going to need colored tissue paper. Mom and Dad should have this in the closet with all the wrapping stuff. You want to make sure, and you probably might want to test a piece of it to make sure that it is the type that's going to bleed, which means the color is going to come out of it because that's going to be very important to our project today. Um, you can also, you're going to need glue, you're going to need um, colored chalks, something that is really cool. Also, mom and dad might have in the gift wrapping closet is some cellophane, some kind of iridescent cellophane. Works great for our project today, good for making those big icebergs. And um, some glitter glue, possibly, maybe a penguin book for some inspiration, or maybe you've seen that Happy Feet movie, that would be really good as well. Um, also, we are going to maybe be needing some styrofoam, and if you can't find any, see if mom or dad has any of those packing peanuts or um, anything like that that's kind of that styrofoam kind of material would work perfect. All right, so while you guys are grabbing all of those supplies, I'm going to leave you with a few penguin facts. The bodies of penguins are shaped like submarines. This streamlining helps them to cut through the water with ease. The muscles that move the wings are very strong. They are the largest muscle in the penguin's body. Flying birds often have hollow bones that are filled with air. This helps reduce the weight of their bodies and makes it easier for them to get off the ground. But penguins, they don't fly. Penguins have solid, heavy bones. This helps to increase the weight of their bodies and makes it easier for them to swim and dive. Penguin feathers are very small and tightly packed. There are more than 70 feathers per square inch. The feathers overlap and are coated with an oil that makes them waterproof. Flying birds need large wings to help hold them in the air, but small wings are better for birds that swim, like penguins. I hope that you have gathered together all of your tissue paper. We are looking for those cool colors of tissue paper today. So you, you might want to bring in maybe some oranges and some reds, maybe for a sunset or something nice like that. But we're really looking for those cool colors. So those are going to be your kind of aqua blues and deep blues, um, purples even, greens work great as well. And if you happen to have kind of a fuchsia pink kind of color, this works great. I know you don't think about icebergs being this kind of color, but we are having some really creative icebergs today. So. We are going to start tearing our tissue paper into just odd shapes. So we want to stay away from these edges. These edges, however, work great if you line them up with the edge of your paper. So you're just going to start doing random shapes. Think about, you know, icebergs are not smooth kind of surfaces. They're very jagged and rough, rugged kind of shapes. So you want to layer your tissue paper. Don't put all the same color. You want to mix all kinds of different colors together. As you are um, getting your shapes ready, don't cut them with scissors because that would be a clean edge. You hardly ever find clean edges in nature. You always find those um, irregular kind of shapes and irregular edges because nature made them. So you're going to continue to fill your page. You might also want to think about maybe adding some mountains in the distance or you might want to do some clouds up in the sky. And as you're working, just kind of keep in mind, get rid of those corners from your paper and any of those straight edges. You want to stay away from that. And as you're kind of filling things, remember that we're going to squirt, we're going to squirt this and with our water. And the dye that is in your tissue paper is going to bleed out. And it's going to take in some places and it's not going to take in some places. So this is one of those things you have no control over which sometimes for an artist is a scary thing, but sometimes it's a really, really fun thing. And so just go with it. 
So if it doesn't turn out exactly how you had it pictured in your head, you can make it work. And sometimes it turns out even better than what you had pictured in your head. So I am continuing to add my shapes. I'm layering my colors, keeping in mind that some of them may not even show at all. I'm going to get some of this um, aqua kind of color. Also, whenever you're using your tissue paper, you want to pick those dark kind of colors. Um, you know, white tissue paper doesn't have any dye in it, so that's not going to work. Really light colors, like this light blue, even though it's beautiful, beautiful color, it's not going to show. There's not very much dye in this. There's a lot more in this. So as I am tearing my shapes and just laying this on here. Now, the tricky part is once you get this all on here, you get it just the way you want it. You have to then transport it to some place where you can squirt it with water. So put some newspapers down because the dye in here is going to bleed all out and all over the place. So don't do it on mom's carpet. Don't do it on the floor. You want to go outside, get it on the grass or something like that where it's not going to be a problem. And once you get everything all situated on there, you're just going to squirt it. All right. And then you're going to need to leave it, let it sit and let it dry. And when you get finished, you should end up, I'm going to show you a couple of mine here. And like I said, this is one of those things you don't have a lot of control over. So you're going to end up with all kinds of different irregularities. You're going to end up with white spots where it didn't take. This one is my favorite, though. This one's a little different. So look at those purples, pinks. I even added a little bit of a warm color over here, kind of for maybe a sunset. It looks exactly like the sun is setting and it's shining on this mountain. So grab whichever one you want to do. You might even want to do a couple and then depend on, you know, depending on what happens, you have a couple to work with. So we are done with our tissue paper. So we can get that out of our way, get our area clean here. The next step that we need to do is kind of establish what is going to be a mountain, what's going to be an iceberg, what kind of surfaces you have going on here. So I like to get my black Sharpie marker and it is up to you. You could make the whole thing a big iceberg. You could make, you know, you could have your sunset, depending on how you want to do it. So I basically just get my um, Sharpie marker and kind of start defining some of my spaces. And remember that icebergs are, you know, they're big, huge forms of ice that are all kind of clumped together, very jagged edges. So we don't want smooth, kind of flowing, curving surfaces. These are a lot more angular and jagged kind of edges. So keep that in mind because as you're defining those surfaces, um, you want to have that in your artwork. So I am coming in here. And the reason why we're doing this black line to kind of define this is for the really fun part later. And it just kind of helps you be able to kind of see your surfaces a little bit easier. And I've got a lot of empty kind of space down here in my picture. So I'm just going to come in just kind of using some of this negative space that's in my work. These areas where I really didn't get any of the dye in here. And I'm just going to kind of form some of my own icebergs. I don't really have a shape to go by. I'm just adding it in there. And keep in mind, you could also, somewhere in your, your portrait, you might want to add, you know, maybe there's some water that maybe those penguins are going to be jumping in. And as we're working, just really define those spaces. If you're going to do mountains, go ahead and add those mountains in there. I don't think I'm going to outline my sun because your sun is more of one of those shapes that really radiates out. I don't want to close it in. So I'm going to just leave that kind of how it is. But I do think that I will kind of come in here and kind of maybe, maybe make these kind of look like mountains back here. Okay. Now that we have got that part done, I want to show you kind of what we're working towards really quick. So let me show you what our finished product is. We're kind of going to work backwards a little bit. So this is what we're going towards today. Now you can see how we've used back all in here is where our tissue paper is. These were all of our shapes that we formed with our tissue paper. This is where that iridescent tissue is going to come in. We're going to be adding our penguin shapes and really get fun with this. This is where we're going to add some of that styrofoam. If you have some, if you don't, you know what? You can, you can make your own. Wad up some paper, form it into shapes. 
And so this is kind of what we're working towards, all right? So having said that, after we have gotten this part finished, we've defined our spaces, the next thing I want you to do is get your colored chalks because we're going to kind of go back in, we're going to intensify some of the colors that you see, we're going to add some more colors. Like in this area in here in my picture, let me turn it so you guys can see, I've got a lot of blank kind of white space in here. I don't want it to be that way, so I'm going to use what I have, use what I've been given here with my tissue paper colors, but I'm going to come in here and kind of intensify this color a little bit. One thing I will say is that your iridescent tissue, this is kind of a very plasticky kind of material, it's hard to get this glued onto your surface if you have a whole lot of chalk dust down there. So I'm going to not do the areas that I'm going to be adding that surface to that surface. All right, so using my chalks, keeping in mind I'm using a cool palette today, so I'm going to start with just kind of a dark blue. And remember, with your chalk as you're working, this is one of those um, materials that is really, really great to blend. So keep that in mind. Don't make everything all the same color. You want to really make this super, super colorful. And as I'm working, I'm just going to kind of lay my color down first, and then I'm going to come back and blend. Some, you might want to blend as you're going, and that's fine too. I also like to come in and kind of get some of these white areas, your negative areas, wherever maybe the tissue paper wasn't laying down really flat. And then I'm just going to kind of blend. And it is, it's still going to show those negative areas, but at least now they're going to have a little more color in them. And I'm going to start blending my other areas out here. And some people, mainly my first graders, <laughs> when they are blending that chalk, boy, they get their whole hands in there. And they've got chalk up to here and here, and they've got mustaches and all kinds of funny stuff. One finger is all you really need whenever you're blending. So you might keep that in mind. That would probably make mom feel a lot better. You know, that's going to be less mess for her to clean up if you just use one finger. You can always wipe that finger off if you need to. All right, so I'm going to keep going with this, and I'm going to keep using those colors. Remember how I mentioned to you earlier about that, the fuchsia kind of color? You can also go back in. If you don't happen to have any of that colored tissue paper, you can always go back in with a kind of hot pink or a fuchsia colored chalk. And I'm going to do that here in a second trying to kind of avoid those areas where I'm going to be putting that plasticky kind of iridescent paper that we talked about. All right, so we are going to go to that pink. And don't forget, I mean, you can add this anywhere. It would work great with those purples and things like that if you used any of that color tissue paper. And I try to kind of get mine inside those areas where I just have the white left showing. It still lets the purples show through, but it just kind of adds some interest into those areas. And don't forget, blend. I mean, you don't have to have a whole lot of it. You can just blend a little bit into a space and really make your artwork pop. Um, something else that you might want to keep in mind are those complementary colors that we've talked about before. We've got lots of um, blues and some purples in here, so it'd be great to work in those yellows and oranges to complement what we've done so far. I think I'm going to add just a bit over here, and then I think I'm going to be done with my chalk. All right, I think I'm going to stop right there. I do think I want to add a little bit up here into the sky real quick. Once we get done with this area, we actually are going to be ready to start constructing, um, actually, you know, instead of constructing our penguins, we're going to actually go, let's go ahead and add on our iridescent paper while we're at it. And something to think about, you know, since this is one of those projects where you have to let your paper dry 
in between, um, you could go ahead and start working on your penguin shapes while you're letting your paper dry, so keep that in mind as well. All right, last little bit. I just couldn't leave that sky just all blue. I want to make it really colorful. Okay, so I'm going to stop, and something else that I wanted to mention really quick, since we're working with chalks, your chalks as you're working, it has a dust that it creates as you're working with it. It is not ever good to blow your dust because it's very bad for us to breathe. So if you've got a bunch of chalk dust on your paper, find a clean, you know, a surface where you can, maybe a paper towel or a newspaper where you can just kind of tap your paper and get all that dust off instead of blowing it into the air for everybody to breathe. It's not good for us. All right, we are ready to work with our iridescent paper. Now, this stuff is a little tricky to cut. You might need mom's help. Mom or dad would probably be, or a big brother or big sister would be excellent for this job. All right, the easiest way to do this is if you will use the straight edge of your paper your iridescent paper and if you will lay it down on the surface and because we have you know outlined our our icebergs basically with our black sharpie we've got a really good way to see exactly what shape that we need to cut out so basically you're just going to look through the iridescent paper and you're just going to retrace the shape now the great thing about this is it doesn't have to be perfect so don't stress out about if you get it off a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. And I'm gonna mark right here because mine goes off a little more on the edge. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead while I'm at it and I'm over here, I'm gonna go ahead and do this side as well. So I'm able to just look through the paper and just kind of outline the shape. Now, the really tricky part is getting it cut. It tends to kind of slip around a little bit. So one, one thing that I've noticed is if you will kind of hold your hand really firm as you're cutting, and if you'll cut it into a smaller piece, it will be a lot easier for you to kind of manipulate and turn. And, whoops, sometimes if you'll use the tip of your scissors, that works even better and further in on your scissors. So as I'm cutting out my shapes, and remember they don't have to be perfect. The other thing that we're gonna do once we get this cut out is that we don't want it to be you know, perfectly straight, even though that would be really nice looking as well. But an iceberg, like we've talked about you know, before this, is that it has very irregular, jagged, kind of rough edges. So we don't want our paper to be all smooth. We want it to look like jagged ice. So we're actually gonna take our paper and we're gonna crumble it up. So as, and when in doing that, it kind of creates that kind of icy kind of look. All right, so I've got my piece cut out here. My scissors have been slipping all around. All right, I'm gonna just take my paper and I'm just gonna crumble it up really, really good. And then I'm gonna open it back up and I'm gonna put some glue down on my surface. Now, when you first put this glue down, you know, it's white Elmer's glue, you're gonna be able to see it. But as Elmer's glue dries, it dries clear. So you won't be able to see it once it dries really well. All right, so I'm gonna open this up. And I'm gonna be really careful when I start to put this down because I don't wanna accidentally get any of the glue on my surface that's gonna show out on the outside because it makes it really cloudy. We really don't want that. We want it to be nice and clear. If you'll just kind of take your black edges, if you have any of those still showing, you can just kind of match those up with your black Sharpie marker marks that you had before. You have to kind of smooth it out in places. Like I said, try to avoid squeezing it out the side and getting it on your fingers and then getting it on your outside of your paper. All right, so I've kind of got this going here. All right, I'm gonna leave my other side. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, next thing that would probably be a good idea to go ahead and add is your styrofoam. Styrofoam, which you can get in sheets like this or you can also get 
and um, like those little styrofoam peanuts that they pack things in if you get something you get a gift in the mail or some kind of a present, maybe it's your birthday, you can save those pieces. I'm always saving all kinds of stuff. And you can actually use your scissors if you wanna kind of trim the edges. If you don't like the color that you get, use that chalk and you can actually change the color. Don't forget the inside edges as well. And just kind of smear that with your finger a little bit. And then you can actually come in and you can add those kind of shapes wherever you want to. You might want to think about, you know, maybe putting those a little closer to the front, but you don't necessarily have to. You could definitely have them in the back as well. And I think I'm going to add one more of those. I don't know where, but I just feel like adding another one, so I'm going to. All right, I'm going to kind of clean up this edge a little bit. And I actually had this styrofoam. It's been at my house forever. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that would make the perfect iceberg. So, finally came in handy that I had that for a reason. I knew I was saving it for a really good reason. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Where do we want to put this one? I think, let me see. I think I'm going to put it up here. So we have got all of our surfaces ready and we're ready to start working on penguins. So we're going to kind of put all this aside and I want you to grab some construction paper. You're going to need black, white, yellow, oranges, those types of colors. If you wanted to, you could actually not go with the actual colors that you see that are on penguins. You can make it more monochromatic and you could go with shades of purple and fuchsia and blues um, and just make them kind of cool colored. Uh, penguins. You could do that, or if you want to go more realistic, you can go more realistic. You can be as creative as you want with this. I think I'm going to keep mine pretty true to their normal colors. All right, um, as you're doing your penguins, there's no wrong way or right way to start your penguin. We are going to start working on your shapes. Remember, anytime we do anything involved cutting out shapes and things like that, I tell you, break it down into shapes. It's a lot less intimidating, a lot less scary if you just break it down into shapes. So something that I want you to keep in mind, there is a very easy way to do this. It, it involves your symmetrical shapes. So remember way, 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 way back in elementary school, in kindergarten, when your teacher said, fold your paper in half and cut out a heart, that was probably your first ever symmetrical shape. Well, we have moved on. We have evolved from hearts. We are moving into penguins. So keep in mind that this is a great way to have both sides be equal. You've got wings that look the same. You've got beaks that look the same. And your feet especially. It's a great one for your feet. All right. So. I'm the type, I like to kind of draw my shape first because it just kind of helps me get it in my head, kind of what shape I'm going for. And I'm going to start out with just a plain oval shape for the body. I folded my paper in half, so as I cut it, it's staying folded in half. So as I cut and I open this shape up, I'm going to have the whole shape. All right, so I've got my little body there. And next, I'm going to work on a head. I'm going to just kind of look at the shape that I made to kind of decide how big I want to make the head. And I'm going to make the head shape. And then remember, we'll be gluing all this together at the end. Now, if you wanted to, you could draw the image with the head attached and the wings attached and have it all be all together. I kind of like to break things up. On mine, I did some of mine all together and then I broke it up. I think I like the way it turns a little bit better if you break up the shapes. And as I go from there, I'm going to do the same thing when it comes to doing the feet. And my little guy that I'm making here, he's kind of little, so I'm going to make little feet. So I'm going to, I've got my paper folded in half. And remember that a penguin, even though it is not a bird that can fly, it is still a bird. And it is a swimmer. So it's got kind of webbed feet. They don't look exactly like a duck's foot but it definitely has got that kind of webbing in the middle between its little toes that helps it to be a good swimmer. So I have cut my two pieces apart, so now I've got two little happy feet. 
and if those are ready, I'm going to do my center part of my penguin's body. Now keep in mind, as you're working, you know, you may want to do the mama penguin and the daddy penguin and the little baby penguins. You might want to do, maybe there's some eggs, some little babies that haven't hatched yet. So keep in mind, don't make all of your penguins the same. Not to mention, there are like 17 different varieties of penguins. So they all, there are all kinds of different looking penguins. There's even a penguin I was reading that is called a chin strap penguin. And it's called the chin strap penguin because it looks like it's wearing a little hat. It's got a little strap that comes through. Not really in real life, but it just looks that way. So I guess that's where it got its little nickname, chin strap penguin. I thought that was kind of cute. So I'm going to start kind of putting my shapes together. I've got the little white part on. And I think it's always funny. People always say that penguins look like little people with little tuxedos on. And that's pretty cute, I think. All right, I'm going to, and this is one of those things, the less glue you can use to get the job done, the better. So use that glue sparingly. And go ahead and you can do your wing shapes and get everything all finished. Now, I'm going to kind of move on. You you know your shapes. You're going to work on all those different kinds of penguins. You can put as many penguins as you want to put in your picture. Um, I'm going to show you my picture one more time because I'm going to talk to you really quick about some extras that you might want to add. Um, you might want to come back in. I added a little polar bear in my picture and what was supposed to be another polar bear but turned into a white wolf. So you know, it doesn't have to be just polar bears. You can add some other animals in there as well. And sometimes when things don't work out exactly how you want them to, you know what? Just change your plan. You can make it work. Um, I also added some fish down in here in my pitcher. And the last thing that I want to talk to you about is your glitter glue sticks. And we kind of talked about this. And basically, once you kind of have everything laid out, everything's glued down, you know everything is where you want it to be. That's where you want to come in with your um, glitter glue. And you can just add kind of some zigzaggy kind of shapes. Keep in mind, we don't want anything very curving or very smooth. We want really jig jagged. So think about that zigzag shape. And you're just going to come in and add some of those touches into your pitcher. Really kind of gives it a very icy and cold kind of feel, which is what we're going for for our pitcher. Don't be afraid to also, you know, think about your sky and other things that you might want to add up into your picture there. And I think that just about does it for our project today. Today's art quote is, True art is characterized by an irresistible urge in the creative artist by Albert Einstein. All right, boys and girls, that wraps up the show for today. I hope that you all have some perfect penguin portraits. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now go out and make some amazing art. What's wrong with this picture? Half of young Americans can't locate economic powers like Japan and India. 20% can't even find the Pacific Ocean. Without geography, our children aren't ready for the world. Geography is everywhere. It's incredible creatures. Rhythm, fashion, flavor. It's economics and politics. It's change. Understanding connections between people and places is critical in the 21st century. That's why we created MyWonderfulWorld.org. Go there now for your free parent and teacher action kits and give our kids the power of global knowledge. Because kids who understand our world today can succeed in it tomorrow.